Chapter 11. The man said to watch us fall, as 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 fell asleep, and we all wandered, looking for better grass. The one who came to find us was tired, unwilling to walk very far. I stood in the woods watching until he gave up. We came to the Highland Dairy Byer by mid-afternoon the next day. We did what all of us knew how to do. We worked hard. Four days later, we were settled with a new fire pit dug and the dairy buyer on the hill crest cleaned out. The mice and spiders gone. Seven days after that, our first calf was born. The cow had no trouble at all. As if her labor had inspired her acquaintances, there were three more calves born in the next two days. One died, but it was too small and unhealthy looking. Its mother was young and she seemed sad and lost. We all felt sorry for her. Fallen sheep claimed the north side of the hill. She milked there, bringing the milk up the hill in their, her pails. Later, once our stock had grazed the area bare, we would have to spend hours finding them new places to eat. But for now, we could concentrate on making cheese and butter and eating. We all drank milk and buttermilk and even the whey. Our cheeks began to fill in. Most of Fallen's ewes had older lambs, and many of them began to nurse less, grazing alongside their mothers. The ewes who didn't have lambs hadn't been bred. They were old and being fattened for the stew pot next fall. One of these surprised Fallen with a lamb about a week after the first calf. The lamb was covered with dark curled silk hair, and we all held it and patted it when Fallen was off gathering firewood. The weather warmed quickly, and as the cows began to produce more calves and milk, our real work began. We cleaned out the big stone-lined fire pits and set up the clavering cauldrons outside where the smoke taste wouldn't cling to the cheese. Then we washed our clothes in the creek and cleared out the tiny creek fire where we would, would, we, could, could, we would store butter. Inside it was a pit filled with seep water from the stream. The cool water would keep the butter solid and sweet. Milking and cheese making are not heavy work compared to cleaning chicken bars or manuring fields or carrying firewood uphill. But it is a constant circle that barely ends when the new day starts at sunset and begins again with morning light. First, every morning we milked, we filled our pails, then the clabbering cauldrons, then the rennet pets, pots. The curds from the days before were rinsed, salted, and pressed. Salting and pressing goes on longer for hard cheese. We were making mostly soft cheese for the tooth to eat as soon as it was finished, but soon we could, we would begin making hard cheese because it lasted longer. Hard or soft, the last step was to form the rounds and wrap them in cloth, then hang them from the rafters to finish. Now that we weren't half starved, we drank mostly the way that separated from the curds. That way the whole milk could all go to cheese. We skimmed the cream each day, and once every four or five days, one of us would churn it into butter. The little buyer built beside the creek had the bottom of the hill, at the bottom of the hill, worked perfectly as a cooling house. As the day passed, I began to feel like we were floating on an ocean of milk. None of us wanted to waste a single drop, so we worked from dark to dark. Some of us tending the cattle, some of us turning summer milk into food that would sustain us until some hay when we would be able to hunt and eat meat again. At night, when we were all too tired to talk and the sheep and cattle were dozing, a soft quiet fell over the high meadow. I was usually the last to sleep, pestered by my own thoughts longer than the rest. Almost every night, I listened to Garrick and Bebbin's breathing, steady and deepen into slumber before I drifted off. One night, when everyone else was asleep, I heard an odd moaning sound. It didn't scare me. It sounded like a cow straining to give birth. Few of them needed any help at all, but I knew I should go look. I rose without disturbing anyone else, knowing I could call for help and wake them if I needed to. There was a half moon that night, and it touched the grass and the healthy, healthy he, heather with silver. I padded quietly away from my friends, listening intently. The night was silent except for the sound of slumber. I had to walk a good ways before I heard the sound again. I changed direction. Having misjudged the first time, I slowed scanning the moonlit ground, looking for a cow with her head up her belly heaving. The sound came again, a high pitch this time. I stopped my heart pounding. It sounded like a mare. We had no horses with us, and we had seen none. A wild horse? I stopped listening. After a long time, I heard a low grunt. Convinced that I had imagined the higher pitch...